Hello my friends, Rob from Button Press Graphics here back with another Inkscape tutorial. Today I'm going to show you the power of filters. Hello my friends, today I'm going to be showing you just how effective the filters can be in Inkscape. It can change what is primarily a very basic blocked coloured shape and turn it into something so much more. An example that I have got on screen right now is this brown box with a green rectangle in the middle and you can change these basic patterns, these basic shapes into something that looks like this. Now I'm going to show you exactly how to do it, how to make this very basic design that looks a hell of a lot more dynamic than its visual counterpart as you can see over here so without further ado let's get into it now before we get started make sure you go to file document properties and make sure that px is selected from the drop down here that's px for pixels and set up the width and height to whatever you would like it to be once you're done you can close out of that now, as seen as we're not going to be using any fill and stroke or anything like that, I'm just going to be using basic colours. You do not need half of these menus open on the right hand side like I have got. But if you do want them open by default anyway, make sure you select your fill and stroke from the top menu up here. And then you've got your text editor there and you have your align distribute right there always good to know and have them open on the right hand side unless there is a big canvas that you're wanting to work with but i digress now in the beginning i want to create just some simple shapes to enable us to get back to the one that i showed you earlier first we go to the create rectangles and squares tool and then we are going to create a random block on the page just like that and I'm going to make this one brown like a deep dark brown once you've done that I am going to control shift and C or go to path object to path then with your select tool selected from the left toolbar you can simply control alt D or right click and go to duplicate to duplicate another piece on top now for this top shape all we need from it is the border so i'm going to hold shift and select black from the bottom and then i am going to select the x to get rid of the main color now when i pull this out as you can see it's just a border and nothing else so with that selected i'm going to go to path stroke to path and it's as simple as that now we are going to create a little green rectangle that can go in the middle so back to your squares and rectangles tool and we just create a randomly sized box just like that and then we come back down to the color chart at the bottom and we can press and hold shift while we click the x to get rid of the outline and then we can just click a dark green Finally, we are going to do one more shape with the squares and rectangles tool. This one's going to be smaller than the green one. But this time I'm going to curve the edges. I'm going to make this white. Or should I say around a grey. I'm going to go with a grey for now. Then using the select tool, I'm going to drag it down. And then I'm going to right click duplicate or control alt d to duplicate the shape so there's now two and that will become obvious for why very very soon but this one i want to be a slightly darker gray so i will go with something that looks like that now we can move on to the filters now if you don't know what a filter is it will take the properties of the object you are selecting and then it will warp them in a multitude of different ways there are a lot 
of different filters that you can put on. Today we're only going to be working with a few of them so I suggest going through each and every one of them yourself and seeing just how they work. Now for an example I'm going to show you a random square just like this and now if we wanted to create a drop shadow behind it there are two different methods you could select this and then duplicate and then drag it off just a little bit to the side turn it into a different color and drop it behind now if you came over to the blur you could extend the blur quite a bit and make a nice little drop shadow behind it so that's how you can get the original way of doing it but there are now ways where you can just select the object come to your filters then go to say shadows and glows and you can literally just select one of these and there you go it's giving you a nice little inset so it looks like it's popping out of the page at you or it's sinking into the page whichever your perspective is so that is how filters work this is now one complete object it is not classed as just a simple shape it is now a shape with a filter and if you ever put on a filter that you do not like you can control z but if you've already managed to put on a lot of filters and done a lot of steps rather than undoing everything you can come back up to filters you can go down to the very bottom where it says remove filters and just like that you've reverted the shape and its filters back to its original form so now you understand how to work with filters you can simply mix and match them to get a really dynamic picture for example if we go from the brown in the center of the page we can then go to filters scroll down to textures and hit back and there you go it's really that simple and now if we move on to the green rectangle in the center we can do exactly the same i'm going to use a different filter this time i'm going to use the shadows and glows and i'm going to use the dark and glow which means it will darken it but it will also add a blur coming on so it's like emanating mist just like that so as you can see it looks like it's been inset but now there is a green glow coming from it you can even add more filters onto the same shape if you wanted to so now we've done that if we add a drop shadow the little menu will pop up we select live preview and that will give us a live preview of what changes we are making so there you go there's the drop shadow now I can check the blur radius I can make it offset to one side or the other as you can see if I turn the blur radius right down you can see the gap there now if I bring it down a little bit further around there will do and then bring the blur radius up a little bit more and apply as you can see now gives that extra little bit of dynamic view to it now finally i wanted to let you know there are some filters that are transparent so no matter what you put on it it won't look like much has changed and it might not give you the effect that you need this is why we laid up two different shapes so now with the top shape selected i can go to filters we can come down to something like non-realistic 3d shaders and frosted glass as you can tell frosted glass is glass so it's going to be slightly see-through and there you go now we can see we can move it and you can see just what it's like without anything but now with the white background as you can see it looks way way more realistic but that is it my friends that is how you can go about transforming your pictures on inkscape 
into something a whole lot more dynamic simply by using filters. If you found this video useful or entertaining, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I am going to be uploading videos just like this every single week and I would love to see you here. If you have any questions, jump into the comments and if you want to get some graphics done by yours truly, then all you have to do is follow the links in the description and let's have a chat about what you want. Until next time my friends, I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell, say thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.